our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. And it's so good to see each one of you this morning. Uh, I think we can just turn around and just give a wave and a smile as we do the song that says, Our God, we can just shout to him and know that he is there for us. Amen. My Jesus, my Savior, there is not like you. And we just want to know what you're saying about this morning.
says to you, Father, I just want to declare that I love you and I love you and I love you. But even with just saying those words is not really enough. But compared to the great sacrifice you made for each one of us on Calvary.
forgive us when we have just made you a convenience rather than give on you our utmost devotion. Lord, even as your word comes, I pray that you will search each one of us and cleanse us from everything that is not of you. You're a holy God. We are here to worship you.
had served God for 36 years very faithfully. When he started off as king, he got rid of all uh, the Baal worship, he got rid of all the Asher poles, he got rid of all the high places, and he got the people to a place where they served God. But then as time went by, he began to rely on his own strength, he began to rely on his own abilities, and he drifted away from God, he turned away from God, and he, he, he started doing things against God's will. And when the, the prophet comes to him, the prophet says, the eyes of the Lord go to and fro, and the Lord wants to strengthen those whose hearts are fully committed to him. This man was no longer committed to God. Someone said, when you are interested, you do what is convenient. But when you are committed, you do whatever it takes. Day three, we looked at, they may be one as we are one. Jesus Christ prays to God the Father that we as the followers of Jesus Christ, the body of Christ, that we are one, like the God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit are one. And the question was, are we marching forward in unity? Day four, we looked at the three great duties or responsibilities of religion. And all religions basically have this, but how we as Christians actually carry out our responsibilities is what we looked at Matthew 6, 1 to 18, righteous acts or acts of compassion, prayer, and fasting. Day five, ask your heavenly father. Whatever you need, whatever you are seeking for, ask of God, our Heavenly Father. He is the good God. He is the good Father. He will give us only the best. Amen, church. Day 6, yesterday, our daily prayer. Ephesians chapter 3, 14 to 21. I'm not sure if there are still copies available in the foyer. If you on your way out, you want to grab a copy of Ephesians chapter 3, verses 21. We've printed it for you to keep somewhere that you can pray that over your family whenever you pray. The love of God is greater far than anything this world has to offer. And then today we talk about the purge of preparation, preparing for revival. And for, uh, Psalm 51 is a psalm or that I already preached on and if you have forgotten it, I'm going to remind you. The question was asked, how many times can you preach the same sermon? Someone said, you preach the same sermon until people get it. Yes. So if you don't get it today, I'm going to have to preach it again next week. <laughs> Stick with me, church. Have mercy on me, O God, according to your unfailing love, according to your great compassion. Blot out my transgressions. Wash away all my iniquity and cleanse me from my sin. For I know my transgressions and my sin is always before me. Against you and you alone have I sinned and done what is evil in your sight. So you are right in your verdict and justified when you judge. Surely I was sinful at birth from the time my mother conceived me. Yet you desired faithfulness even in the womb. You taught me wisdom in that secret place. Cleanse me with hyssop, and I will be clean. Wash me, and I will be whiter than snow. Let me hear joy and gladness. Let the bones you have crushed rejoice. Hide your face from my sins, and blot out all my iniquity. Create in me a pure heart, O God, and renew a steadfast spirit within me. Do not cast me from your presence or take your Holy Spirit from me. Restore to me the joy of your salvation and grant me a willing spirit to sustain me. And I can close the service right now. If you get that, then we are done. We have what God wants us to do, calling out to Him, letting God know that we know that we are sinful human beings. 
But my first point this morning is living in denial. Here we have the psalm that David writes after he had committed adultery with this lady Bathsheba. He, he pretended for a long time that nothing was wrong. He pretended that nothing had happened. And he lived in denial for a long time. And there are so many times that we do things that are not pleasing in the sight of God and we pretend as if nothing is wrong. We live in denial. And so in first, Second Samuel chapter 12, he talks to, uh, the, Nathan talks to David. The Lord sent Nathan to David when he came to him. He said there were two men in a certain town, one rich and the other poor. The rich man had a very large number of sheep and cattle, but the poor man had nothing except one little lamb he had bought. He raised it and it grew up with him and his children, and it shared his food and drank from his cup, even slept in his arms. It was like a daughter to him. Now a traveler came to the rich man, but the rich man refrained from taking one of his own sheep or cattle to prepare a meal for the traveler who had come to him. Instead, he took the lamb that belonged to the poor man and prepared it for the one who had come. Listen to this. David burned with anger against the man and said to Nathan, As surely as the Lord lives, the man who did this must die. He must pay for that lamb four times over because he did such a, such a thing and had no pity. That man must die, but he must pay first. He can't die first and then pay. Then Nathan said to David, You are that man. You are that man. This is what the Lord, the God of Israel says. I anointed you king over Israel. I del delivered you from the hand of Saul. I gave your, your, your master's house to you and your master's wives into your arms. I gave you all of Israel and Judah. And if this, all this had been too little, I would have given you even more. Why did you despise the word of the Lord by doing what is evil in his eyes? You struck down Uriah the Hittite with the sword and took his wife to be your own. You killed him with the sword of the Ammonites. Now, therefore, the sword will never depart from your house because you despised me and took the wife of Uriah the Hittite to be your own. How many times do we do this? We find fault in someone else. We look for the excuse to divert attention away from ourselves by pointing fingers at someone else. That he must die. That person is evil. And we point fingers at everyone else beside looking in the mirror so that we can really point the finger. You see, David lived in denial until he was reminded that he was the one that sinned against God. And when I speak to people and, and, and we deal with spiritual matters, there will always be a reason why I'm not doing what I'm supposed to do or why I'm doing what I'm doing because someone else is responsible for my fault. Someone else is causing me to sin. Someone else is causing me to walk against God's will. And David is just like us. He wants justice for the person that had been harmed, but he was the one that caused it. And so we talk about confession. We talk about forgiveness and renewal. My church, when we come before God, we have to come before God to confess. Don't look for reasons as to why you are doing what you are doing or why you're not doing what you're supposed to be doing. Look to God and confess that you are the one that is at fault. Listen to what he says. Have mercy on me, O God, according to your unfailing love. Our God loves us with that agape love we talk about. Unconditional love. God is not going to tell you, first sort your life out before you come to me. A lot of people tell us that. 
Pastor, I want to sort my life out. It's a little bit messed up right now before I commit my life to God. No, God will sort your mess out. Someone said, you turn your mess into a message. He'll turn your test into a testimony. And I'm going to sound charismatic this guy. <laughs> Have mercy on me, O God, according to your unfailing love, according to your great compassion. Lock out my transgressions. We're back at school. Some teachers are busy teaching our children. Now they have fancy uh, uh, boards that they use, what they call it? Smart, smart boards. They have smart boards. The teacher sits at the back of the class with the, with the laptop and they're teaching the children from the back and everything is on the board. But in my day, we had what it was, was called a blackboard or a green board or a chalkboard. You were there? Yes. You guys are old. <laughs> but then we would go and, 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 oh, when the teacher leaves the class, they appoint someone to write down all the names of the talkers. <laughs> and guess whose name will be there? But what we do, we go there and we wipe it out before the teacher comes. And David is saying, wipe out my sins, block out my transgressions, Lord. I don't want to see, I don't want to be known for all the wrong things that I have done. Lord, cleanse me. Listen to what he says, wash away all my iniquity and cleanse me from my sin. For I know my transgressions and my sin is always before me against you. You only have I sinned and done what is evil in your sight. So you are right in your verdict and justified when you judge. You see, David realized that if we sin against God, it doesn't matter what we do down here, but we are sinning against God even when I'm doing something against my neighbor. Love the Lord your God with all your heart and love the, your neighbor as yourself. And so, yes, he sinned against his neighbor, but he did something against God, against you. You only have I sinned. And so repentance, it is said, that, that repentance that we talk about, the word I like to use is metanoia. There you go. Metanoia called, uh, is, it's called for our, throughout the Bible. You will find this concept or this idea being proclaimed throughout the Bible. It is us turning away from wickedness. It is us turning away from our sins and turning toward God. If you seek me, you will find me when you seek me with all of your heart. Not some part of it, all of your heart. And it's a summons to a personal, absolute, and ultimate, unconditional surrender to God as the Sovereign Lord. No conditions. When we sign contracts, there are certain disclaimers and all kinds of things that appear there. When we surrender to God, we can't come to Him with some disclaimer, Lord, you know, at work things are a little bit hectic for me, so I can't really... Guarantee that I'm going to be faithful to you there. I might just lose it with the boss. I might lose it with the co-worker. So, so, so Lord, uh, give me a chance for the, for the weekdays. But on Sunday, I will serve you. No, my friend, it doesn't work like that. We must surrender all to Jesus Christ. And though it includes sorrow and regret, it is, it is more than that. It's in repenting one makes a complete change of direction. 180 degrees. I go the other way. I walk away from the past life. I am no longer the way I used to be. Last night when we were here, I was thinking of some old choruses that started coming to mind as, as we shared the time together here. One of those choruses, no turning back, well, Teddy, I have decided to follow Jesus. And in those days, in the early years, when people committed their lives to Jesus, they, they came from terrible backgrounds and they knew what it meant to keep going forward. No turning back, I can't go back there, Lord. I don't want to go back there. Keep me from going back there. 
And David appeals to God with great co compassion and mercy when he comes before God in repentance. We have to confess our sins. We have to repent of our sins. He confesses his sin to the Holy God and he acknowledges that he has sinned against God. But he knows that God is the righteous judge. I always say, thank you, Lord, that these people are not God. Because we are the worst judges that you can get. We don't forget. You can be redeemed by God itself, but people will always point you back to those days. And therefore, David knows, he says, God is the righteous one. He is the righteous judge. And when God forgives us, it doesn't matter what everyone else says. He forgives us. He cleanses us. Allow me to quote from the notes in the John Wesley Bible. He says, John Wesley was convinced that living truthfully is a mark of God's grace in our lives. Grace is undeserved favor. So it is a mark of God's undeserved favor in our lives. God is actively working and moving in through the messiness of things, illuminating our lives and prompting our desire to see what is really going on. Because we are created in God's image, in our destiny to be restored to the fullness of that image, we need to discern our responsibility in refusing and failing to live according to God's good purpose. We need to acknowledge that we are incapable of resolving things according to our own wisdom and power. You cannot do it on your own. And according to Wesley, God's prevenient grace assists us to be honest with God, ourselves and others. But this requires humility. One of our biggest struggles is pride. I don't want to allow people to get to me. So my pride will prevent me from admitting that I am wrong. My pride will uh, prevent me from confessing or admitting that I am sinful. But when we come to God, we must be humble. Humility and a desire to change our minds and the direction of our lives and characters. Wesley believed that the Holy Spirit empowers this turning point in a manner that fully respects and enables the workings of our human capacities. My friend, we have a group of people that meet here on a Sunday evening. They have various needs, substance abuse, alcohol abuse, all kinds of things. And they come together, they don't belong to the church, they just use our premises. They come together on a Sunday night, and I've been telling people about this. I've been so challenged by what they are doing. Through the pouring rain, you know how we had so much rain in the last few uh, weeks or so, uh, before Christmas and so on. Pouring rain, and I would think they will not be coming, but they are here on a Sunday evening. From 7 to half past 8. Car parks full on the top and the bottom. They were here Christmas Day, 7 to half past 8. They were here New Year's Day, 7 to half past 8. They are here every Sunday because they realize that they have a problem and they need help. And we can't even have an evening service because people are too busy with their lives. We talk about the restoring power of God. Look with me at verse 10. Creating me a pure heart, O God, and renew a steadfast spirit within me. Do not cast me from your presence or take your Holy Spirit from me. Restore to me the joy of your salvation and grant me a willing spirit to sustain me. That I think is critical, it's crucial. We must ask of God that he gives us that willing spirit to be able to go forward because we are so temperamental in the way we serve God when things are not going well then I just pack up and I say no not now Lord I will deal with you later let me sort out my own problems 
But in this portion of the psalm, David is asking God to restore him. He's asking God to restore to him the joy of God's salvation. Because David knew what he was when he was a young shepherd boy. And how God worked in his life. How God used him to destroy the enemies that came up against him. How God used him in, for God's glory. But now, because he has sinned against God, he's gone his own way, he's asking God to give him a willing spirit. You see, we must change. We cannot go on year in, year out and do the same old things. Metanoia, we have to change and go the other direction. God is the one who gives us a pure heart. As faithful as these people are that come here seeking help for the problem that they have, only God can give us a pure heart. God is the one that can renew a steadfast spirit in me. God is the one that can help me to be steadfast, to be unmoved by the things that I will face. Maybe you have a problem. Maybe you have a habit. Maybe you have something that you are going through right now. My friend, you need God to help you. We can do nothing in our own strength. Yes, great intentions cannot change the heart of humanity. Let me just put this one in there. How many of us have decided that this year we're going to go on a strict diet? Are we still doing it? We are now in week three, is it? Are we still following through with that intention of changing this year? We can do nothing in our own strength. Great intentions cannot change the heart of humanity. He David knew that it could only truly change, but he needed to do it in the power of the Holy Spirit. And so he says, do not cast me from your presence or take your Holy Spirit from me. If you don't have the Holy Spirit guiding you, showing you the way to go, then you are doing things in your own strength. Church, if we are going to experience revival, first and foremost, we need to be filled with the power of the Holy Spirit. Not another new program. Not another premises or maybe we can do with some egg conditions. But that is not going to change our hearts. We need the power of the Holy Spirit in us. And if we are going to experience renewal, if we are going to experience um, restoration in our spiritual lives, then we must begin to acknowledge and confess our sins. God is willing to forgive us, to cleanse us. Stop living in denial. Admit that you are a sinner that needs to be saved by grace. Jesus Christ shed his precious blood on the cross of Calvary so that you and I can be cleansed of that sin. We don't have to carry the burden ourselves. There's a funny um, a TikTok thing, I think it is. I'm not sure. I saw a little clip somewhere. But this person is carrying a wheelbarrow on their head, and then someone on the side of the road says, "No, no." Uh, they got the thing and the wheelbarrow on the head. They said, "No, take the wheelbarrow, put it down, put the thing in the wheelbarrow again." So they take the thing, put the the bag in the wheelbarrow, and then put it back on their head. <laughs> That's how we are. We don't want to let, get, let go of our sin. We want to carry it ourselves. We think we can solve our own problems. Only God can forgive you, my friend. Only God can strengthen you. Confess your sins. God will forgive you. He will renew you. He will change you. He will make you a new creation. Because the restoring power of God is through the Holy Spirit. Yes, Jesus died to reconcile us to our Heavenly Father. But we must confess our sins and determine in our hearts with the power of, of the Holy Spirit that change must take place. Not the way we think, 
Not the uh, way we say God must do things. No, allow, allow God to do things His way. Yes, we've been praying for and we're expecting revival in our hearts. We're expecting revival in our church. We're expecting revival in our, in our nation. But it starts right here. It starts with confessing to God that I am the problem, Lord. I am the one that is sinful. I am the one in need of your touch. When we confess our sins, the Bible says, He is faithful and just, and He will forgive us of our sins, and He will cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Let's close our eyes and bow our heads. All to Jesus I surrender. All to Him I freely give. As Joel comes up, let's just take time to focus on our spiritual state, condition, whatever you want to call it. The altars are open. There are cushions that you can use to kneel if you feel that your knees will be able to handle the cup. But while we sing this song, you come. We want to pray over you today that God will give you a steadfast spirit. He will fill you with His Holy Spirit so that you will be able to stand firm because He, when He cleanses us, we live our life for Him and Him alone. Oh, to Jesus, I surrender. Oh, you come, you come. There are questions. Don't wait for someone else to come. You come. God is speaking into your heart, my friend. Those of you that are able to pray with those that are here, just, just come alongside them. Just encourage them to surrender all to Jesus Christ. after you and seek after you with all of their hearts. 
Lord, we know that without you, we can do nothing. We need your Holy Spirit's presence in our lives, each one of us. Lord, no one is, is more important than the next. We all need your Holy Spirit in our lives. And so, Father God, I pray that you will fill us. Lord, that you will help us, Lord, to seek, with, uh, uh, with, seek after you with our hearts. And Father God, that as you revive our hearts, oh God, you revive the church. We as the body of Christ will no longer be afraid or, or intimidated by what is going on in the world, but we will go forth in the power of the Holy Spirit, going forth to preach the gospel, baptizing in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Father God, I pray for our nation. We are a broken nation. We are a nation that is in deep trouble. We have drifted away from your holy presence of God. And Lord, Father, our leaders are not uh, adhering to what you have to say. Lord, our leaders are doing their own things. I pray, Lord, in the name of Jesus, wherever they are today, Lord, that you will minister into their hearts through your Holy Spirit, that they will turn back to Jesus Christ, the author and perfecter of our faith. Father God, I pray that corruption will be brought to a standstill in our country. Yes. Father God, those that are dealing in all kinds of uh, illegal activity, Father, it will be brought to a standstill yes. because of your presence of God. You will convict the hearts of men and women that are, Lord, uh, perpetrating all these evil acts. We think of all those that are without jobs, that are now uh, going into crime to put food on their tables. Father God, I pray that you will be merciful. Our country needs you. And Lord, as the church, we have not been the voice, the model voice that we were supposed to be. We are not speaking out against evil. We are not speaking out against corruption. We are not speaking out against sin. So I pray, God, that once again, we come to you in confession. That when we are idle, when we are busy with our own lives, we are neglecting to reach out to those that are lost. Stir us into action, O oh God. Help us to turn away from the old ways and to seek after you, knowing, O oh God, that you will create in us a clean heart, a pure heart. So that we can follow up to you. I pray, Lord, for those that are confessing before you, those that are surrendering their lives to you. Father God, your holy presence will cleanse them, set them free, O God, so that they will live a life that is pleasing in your sight, holy and acceptable to you. I pray, God, as we go from this place today, that we will not forget about what we have heard today. You will continue to remind us, Lord, that we have a responsibility to draw close to you in confession, to repent of our sins. I pray, Lord, for your mercy, for your grace. I pray, Father God, for your favor. In Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you, church, for joining us today. We continue to pray for all the needs that we have brought before God this past week. We continue to pray for victory. We continue to pray for those that are still out there not serving God. Yes, our week of prayer and fasting has come to an end, but we don't stop praying. We continue. <coughs> continue to pray for your families, for your loved ones, for your colleagues, for all those that you come into contact with. We're going to go into a time of communion. And for those of you that have been chosen to assist me today, you can get yourself ready. But as we prepare our hearts, let us be reminded of this great, great sacrifice. That we will not take for granted 
what Jesus Christ did for us. But we will serve you in the future of all this. God bless you. On the night that our Lord was betrayed, he took bread. When he had broken it, he gave it to his disciples, saying, This is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Likewise, after supper, he took the cup. When he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, which is poured out for many. Do this. In remembrance of me. And so the stewards will serve you this morning. And as we receive, please hold on to the elements. Once everyone has received, we will all partake together. God bless you. Body of our Lord Jesus Christ, which was broken for you, is a blameless unto everlasting life. Jesus Christ to share for you.
which was broken for you, preserving blameless unto everlasting life. Take and eat this in remembrance that Christ died for you and be thankful. Take and eat. The blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, which was shed for you, preserve your blameless unto everlasting life. They can drink this in remembrance that Christ's blood was shed for you and be thankful. They can drink it. Father God, we pray that you will continue to unite our hearts, that we will move forward in the power of the Holy Spirit. But we will move together as one. Bind us together with cords of love that cannot be broken. That the world will know that we are your disciples by the love that we have for one another. In Jesus' name. Amen.
this morning, Father, for this time that we could be found in your presence. We thank you, Lord, for the tithes and the offering that was taken up this morning. I pray, O oh God, that you will use it for the furthest and, and the extension of your kingdom in the name of Jesus. We pray for those, O oh God, who saw this morning, that you will bless them, O oh God, according to your word, pressed down, shaken together and running over, and that they will never lack this morning. Father, and for those who did not have to give this morning, I pray for your provision. I pray, O oh God, that you will open the doors for them, that you will provide jobs for them, Father God, that next time they will be able to come and bless your house in the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Amen. May be seated and call on Dr. Sebo. Let's have our best announcement. God is good. All the time, God is good. Um, I greet you all in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Um, I thank the Lord for giving us the time to be together. First of all, I want to say thank you to the pastor. Um, I just want to say his wife and the children for, for the sustenance that you we gave to the pastor as we prepared every day, every night. Uh, to, for us to actually receive the spiritual food um, and we thank God for the church and, and for everybody that supported that. The, the Bible says uh, because this was bringing us, bringing us closer to God every day, you know, we, every day we want to walk like Jesus and so things like that actually bring us closer to Jesus because the Bible says those who know Him will be strong and will do exploits meaning they will do wonderful things, things that they have never thought, never had, never, never been done, just because we are closer to God. The service times remain the same. Uh, on um, every Sunday, uh, we have the church at, at, at 9.30. Sunday school, school is now open, it started today. Um, and then the prayer in the morning at 9 o'clock, if you wish to join, Please speak to Sherilyn, and then the group also meets uh, online on Thursday. Then uh, midweek devotion remains at 7:30 p.m. Birthdays and anniversaries. Can you can 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 can? I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Can 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 on the 28th of January. Uh, Aunt Jolly, she turned it out of January. Niresh Maharaj on the 24th, on the 27th, Dr. Gugu. And if you are celebrating a birthday and you don't seem to have your updated um, details, please uh, come and speak to us. Uh, the ladies' reopening meeting on the 24th of, um, of, of January at 10 a.m. Thank you, ladies, for, for waking up. I mean, as men, we've been very worried about you. You can, you can pray. And so, thank God. God is... Lily wants to say something. I think she wants to sing for us then. Huh? Yeah. <laughs> thank you, Brother Sipo. Uh, thank you, men, for praying for us because now we're wide awake. And though I'm definitely not going to do this again. Uh, greetings, church. The Lord is good and His mercy endures forever. Amen. Amen. Um, before I proceed, Pastor, may you please join us to Lucy in the front, uh, next to her. Thank you. So this morning, church, we commemorate a very important occasion. Sorry, church. Pastor's got lots of things that he's doing. And we have special guests here today who have joined us to celebrate with us. Oh, that's Pastor Dora, next to Sister Lucy. <laughs> I thought they just came to visit me. Well, you are special. Pastor, next to Sister Lucy. Oh, sorry. I thought she came up. It's not all about you, Pastor. Sometimes it is Lucy too. Right. So thank you to our special guests for gracing us with your presence today. We're truly honored that you are here to share this special moment. The Bible says give thanks in all things. So today we give thanks and we want to commemorate two special occasions 
And as you know, Pastor and Lucy have celebrated their 30th wedding anniversary. And today we want to give special recognition to them. Thank you. Let's give them a round of applause. So, it was the summer of 1993. And the day was greeted with showers of blessing. The young man from down the bottom, South Cape Town, found his true love way up in Durban, Chatsworth. They were married at the Church of the Nazarene on the 9th of January, and from what I heard, it poured that day. <laughs> and they had a very colorful life, raising two young girls, and spreading the love wherever they went. And today, we want to honor them, and thank you for the married couple that you are, for the example that you set in your work, the love, the care, the consideration, the passion that you have for loved ones, for lost ones, for those in desperate need at all times. You truly are inspiration and a motivation to us. So they have lived in a few places, Kauteng to name a few, um, and Pastor was, uh, had a colorful career, if I should say, from my research. Uh, in Kauteng, he was a, I got this research from your family and friends, so if it's incorrect, then pardon me. They need to be spoken to. Um, in Kauteng, you were the um, assistant, sorry, youth pastor at the Lindhurst Baptist Church, and you also a counselor at the De Hazel Primary School, where you assisted there. And I know that Lucy would have been standing beside you. So today, we want to bless you with some tokens of our appreciation as a congregation, and I want to call my teammates, Cheryl, Sister Cheryl and Sister Melanie, who will present you with a love token from us. Chatsworth, 
on holiday with his uh, family. Uh, he was very young at that time, and now let's see, he's grown and matured <laughs> over the years. <laughs> yeah, uh, in fact, uh, he uh, came to visit his sister, uh, that's uh, uh, Reverend Sabji's uh, wife, and uh, they spent most of their holidays uh, in Durban. And being in Durban, and as uh, one of the congregants, uh, he was not more, he was much more than a friend. He was like family. Mm -hmm. Like family, and, uh, and he was involved in quite a bit of activities. I think the speaker has mentioned a few. And um, he was the youth leader in our church. And uh, as a youth leader, we always look forward for, you know, the dramas and the skits that they uh, presented uh, uh, to us. And um, it was so much of fun. So much of fun and we had laughter and jokes. And he had this uh, Cape Town accent, you know. <laughs> and he was a uh, real blessing to us. And. Um, and his ex and all of that, and we asked him, hey, how is it all possible? He says, you know what? Do you know uh, uh, Michelle? Michelle Wu? Michelle Pfeiffer? <laughs> <laughs> so we get our uh, uh, acting from the family too. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and uh, he was also involved in our church choir. And he had about over 20 young people that were involved in the choir. Uh, and uh, he was very intensive in the training. And uh, I recall that, um, uh, what you call, uh, Kelly and uh, Ailey, they were quite young babies. And they used to sleep on our uh, carpet in the church while the rehearsals uh, were going on. And, uh, Pastor, I can still remember the green blazer, <laughs> the white pants, and you was the choir master. <laughs> we enjoy those wonderful moments, and uh, um, he was so involved in church that we were a great happy family. And then suddenly we uh, got the message that the subjects received a call to uh, pastor a church in Cape Town and they were preparing to leave. And uh, Mama was worried because the young man uh, wanted to stay back in uh, Durban. And uh, behold, we, my wife and I, we said, listen, he must come and stay with us. So he stayed with us and he was a son to us, my wife and I. and. Uh, I remember when my wife used to cook, you know, they cook a bit of a pancit curry and they used to say, Oh man, the curry is charo. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we had a lot of uh, fun, you know, and uh, uh, he was a big brother to my uh, daughter Mona and my son Eugene. And, uh, um, we really enjoyed Pastor. And on his wedding, like uh, the convener said, the bridegroom's family left from my house to the wedding and must know it was pouring with rain. I don't know what they say that, you know, one of you must have been eating from the pot. <laughs> <laughs> and it rained so heavily, you know. And, uh, in fact, uh, Pastor Rodney is very close and very dear to us. And uh, whenever he heard about us not well or in hospital, he ensured that he uh, visited us, he prayed over us. And, uh, you know, uh, then he went to the Religious Baptist Church as a youth pastor. And uh, I had the opportunity because my son uh, lives in Johannesburg. And whenever we went up to Johannesburg, we fellowshiped at his church. 
and uh, always a blessing. You know, Pastor with his seven preparation and his PowerPoint and all of that really blessed us. We miss that now, but anyhow, I was pleased to read Mrs. the old days. Thank you, Pastor, for that. So, then Pastor Rodney accepted the position as a senior pastor at the Chatham Church of the Nazarene. And we were so glad. Uh, he was there with us for many years. And while he was there, he studied. He studied and he obtained the Bachelor of Theology degree. It was in Johannesburg. So he also had something in uh, London. Masters. 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 Okay, Masters. So you can see a uh, man of God that wanted to study the Word of God and he wanted to give his congregation the best word that he can give us. And this morning, the Metoya. Metanoia. A change uh, to renewal and restoring of our spirit. We always need the restoring because sometimes we take a detour and we go away from the main road. So thank you, Pastor, for bringing us back on a, a track through your message this morning. So we, after all those wonderful times, then he told us, listen, I accepted a calling to the Morningside Church of the Nazarene. That was quite a, a shock to us and uh, we love him and his family and we really miss them very much. And fortunately, we are not so far away, we still are in contact and we thank you for your love, your goodness and your uh, mercies towards us. Thank you, Pastor, and congratulations on reaching a milestone, I believe you are 20 years in the ministry, a milestone, and uh, Lucy, uh, your <laughs> wedding anniversary, we congratulate you and uh, may you have many more blissful years ahead of you. And we thank the girls and uh, Kaylee and Ailey, you all have been also an inspiration to us, not forgetting the uh, Mother in law of the year. <laughs> Celebration. Thank you for that. And uh, we want to, uh, we continue to pray for you uh, in your ministry here. And I know that you are also praying for us as well. Mm -hmm. And uh, my hope and my desire is to go on serving in the kingdom of God because God is good mm -hmm. and He's good all the time. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, Cheryl knows the background that we come from, from the Hindu background and coming to know Christ as our personal Savior. It is tremendous change in our lives. Amen. And there is no more turning back for us. The cross before me and the world behind me. Amen. And uh, we thank and praise God for all good things that He brings into our lives. Thank Amen. you very much. Amen. Thank you, Uncle Teddy. I, I think those were sentiments to value. Uh, the journey that took down memory lane, much to be valued. Um, thank you for those kind words. We have uh, two other tributes of guests who could not be here today, so I'm going to read them very quickly. Congratulations, Reverend, Rod Reverend Rodney Fife, on your 20th year of ministry. Our family is truly grateful for you and for the call upon your life. Thank you for all the wonderful ministry times we shared together. We are, you are indeed a man of God's own heart. Your ministry is absolutely special, even as we see your active involvement with your precious family for reaching souls for Jesus. Looking forward to many more ministries, years of God that will allow you, and your labor of love to our faithful Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Blessings to you, Rev. From Selim, Cassandra, and Natanya, Rian, Valencia, Victoria, Brother Jack, and our late mom, Sister Esther. Your next greeting, greeting to Pastor Rodney and family, as well as the MCC congregation, in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. On behalf of the Church of the Nazarene in Chatsworth, I want to extend our congratulations to Pastor Rodney on attaining 
20 years in ministry. I know that you have a long history with Chatsu Church and I want to acknowledge the input you have had in the lives of our congregants. Being called a serve, to serve in the kingdom is the highest calling any person can achieve. In Luke 22 verse 27, Jesus said, I am among you as one who serves. Christ-like service grows out of genuine love for the Savior and compassion and love for those whom he gives us opportunities to minister to. As you enter a new decade in ministry, our prayer is that you will go forward as the Lord leads you and that his grace will always be sufficient to you. God bless you richly, Pastor Jeff Pillay, the board and the congregation of the Chancellor Church of the Nazarene. Bless you, Pastor. May I ask you to please join us on the stage one final time, you and Sister Lucy. Days, uh, 
but you have kept them, Father, and you have sustained them, and we know that today you will continue to bless their marriage, productive, fruitful, and that through their lives, many, many more in the kingdom of God will be touched and impacted in Jesus' name. Thank you for Haley, thank you for Kelly, Auntie Sophie, thank you for their support, Father. Sometimes the ministry takes a toll on our families, uh, but thank you for them today that they will not lose heart, uh, that they will not become discouraged and disillusioned, uh, but they will continue to serve uh, in the kingdom of God. And we thank you for that now in Jesus' mighty name. Amen and amen. to us, O oh God, as, as your people. I pray this morning, Father, that you will bless them. I pray, O oh God, that you will open the windows of heaven, O oh God, and that you will pour out a blessing upon them, O oh God, so much that they will not be able to contain it in the name of Jesus. I pray, O oh God, for their cupboards at home. I pray for, pray for their vehicles, O oh God. I pray for their petrol tank. I pray this morning, O oh God, for your provision in the name of Jesus. I thank you this morning, O oh God, for your word declares that the plans of the Lord stand strong forever. And Father God, that your purpose, the purposes of your heart for them, O oh God, is from generation to generation. And O oh God, that's why we pray for Kelly and Haley. We thank you for their lives this morning, O oh God. Thank you, Father God, for their faithfulness to the ministry. Thank you, God, for their dedication. Father, when we look at them, we see the dedication. We see their faithfulness. We see their hearts this morning. I pray this morning, Father God, that even as they continue to find even their purpose in you this morning, O oh God, and the purposes and plans that you have for them, I pray this morning, God, that you will bless them. I pray, O oh God, the meaningful blessing of God upon their lives. I thank you this morning for Auntie Salvi. Thank you for her life. Thank you, God, for her support to the pastoral family. I pray this morning, God, that you'll even meet her need this morning. Thank you for the intercessor that she is. Yes. Thank you, God, that she keeps intercessing for her family, and not just for her family, oh God, but even for us as the people of God this morning. I pray this morning for Lady Lucy. Thank you for her life. Thank you, Father God, for her faith. Oh God, we are so grateful, Lord. We look at her life and we see an example of godliness. Mm -hmm. We see an example this morning, oh God, of what a woman of God should be. And Father, she is uh, your, your typical woman that the Bible talks about, that many many women has surpasses them all. But Father God, I pray in the name of Jesus, Lord, that you'll continue to bless her, even in the workplace, oh God. Continue, Father God, even when, when things seems tough in ministry, I pray, oh God, that you will help us as women. Father God, that we will come around, oh God, even as Moses, Father God, when Aaron and her came around Moses to lift up the arms, I pray, oh God, that you will give us courage to come around her, to support her, Father God, to sustain her, to help her, to run this race, oh God, and to carry this torch, Father God, with diligence that you've placed in her hand. Bless this family, I pray, in the name of Jesus. Amen. Thank you, Pastor Ed. Welcome, Pastor Lucy. You may cut this beautiful chocolate cake. We really have to cut it. Maybe it is a real cake. <laughs>
And we have, uh, and for today we have a light refreshments in the coffee bar. I know it is hot, but please do join us, especially our guests. We'd love to have fellowship with you briefly. And God bless you. Have a wonderful week, and Pastor. Thank you, Church, for this uh, wonderful expression of your love. And thank Brother Teddy and Sister West and Sister Dyer for joining us and Sister Priscilla and uh, Matthew there. Thank you for joining us. And of course, Brother Teddy and Sister West uh, became my uh, mother and father when I was a bachelor. And uh, yeah, so it's a long story. <laughs> so I won't go into that now. Thank you, Church, for uh, your love, and we trust that even as we continue on this journey, that the God will continue to stand with us. And we will walk together in unity, in faith, and in love. Shall we stand for the benediction? Now, Church, receive this blessing. May the threefold blessing of Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be our portion now and forevermore. So God's children say together. Amen. Praise God from whom.